title of the first section of notes is find the next term in a geometric sequence. Geometric sequence is a series of numbers like a arithmetic sequence. The difference is geometric will be multiplying by a number rather than adding or subtracting a number. First sequence we'll look at is negative 120, 60, negative 30, and 15. Dot 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 means these series will continue forever and ever. Find the next term just means we'll find the next number. For a geometric sequence, we want to find what r is. r is the rate, which is the number we're multiplying by each time to get the new number. To find what r is, you can take the second number, which is 60, and divide by the first number, which is negative 120. Dividing the second by the first number tells you what r would be. In this case, it would be negative 1 half. So each number is being multiplied by negative 1 half. So for next number is 15. 15 times negative 1 half. If you put it in decimal form, that would be negative 7.5. You could also do negative 15 over 2. Next sequence and last sequence for the section is 8, 20, 50, 125, dot, dot, dot. To find the next number in the sequence, again, first we want to find r, which is the rate. Taking the second number, dividing by the first number, would be 20 over 8, or changing to a decimal, would be 2.5. So each number is being multiplied by 2.5. So our next term would be 125 times 2.5, which would be 312.5. The title of the next section is finding an indicated term of a geometric sequence. The formula for a geometric sequence is a sub n, which again is the final term, times a sub 1, which is the first term, times r, which in the previous problems the rate, the number you're multiplying by each time, to the exponent of n minus 1. n again is the number of terms in the sequence. First question, we want to find the eighth term. when a sub 1 equals negative 3 and r equals negative 2. Using the formula, a sub n, if we're looking for the eighth term, would be a sub 8. a sub 1, the first term, is negative 3. And we're multiplying by r, which is negative 2 to the exponent of n minus 1, which would be 8 minus 1. So a sub 8, or the 8th term. Negative 3 would stay the same. We'll do exponents first before we multiply. 8 minus 1 would be 7. 
and negative 2 to the seventh power would be negative 128. Multiplying that out, the eighth term comes out to 384. Negative 3 times negative 128. So again, what this means is you start at the first term, negative 3. We're multiplying by negative 2 each time. The eighth term would be 384. Next problem, which is the last problem for the section. We want to find a sub n for the sequence 1 fifth, 1, 5, dot, dot, dot. Again, we'll use the same formula, same numbers. a sub 1, the first term is given, is 1 fifth. And we want to find out what r is equal to. r again, you can take the second number and divide by the first number. In this case, it would be 1 divided by 1 fifth. Instead of dividing by 1 fifth, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So r would just be equal to 5. Finding a sub 9, a sub 1 is 1 fifth times r which is 5, to the exponent of n minus 1. The 9 means there's 9 terms, so 9 minus 1. One fifth would stay the same. 9 minus 1 would be 8, so we have 5 to the 8th power. That number comes out to be 390,625. We're still multiplying that number by one fifth or dividing by five. So our final answer would be 78,125. Again, starting with the sequence one fifth, one, five, multiplying by five each time, the ninth number would be 78,125. Next section of notes is titled Right an Equation. Given a sequence. First sequence we have is 36, 12, 4, Dot, dot, dot. Given the sequence, we can write a formula. The formula will include the first term and also the rate. The first term again is just the first number, which is 36. And the rate, again, take the second number divided by the first number, 12 over 36, which reduces to one third. To write an equation, We'll use the same equation from the previous section. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. For the equations, a sub n would stay the same. a sub 1 would be 36. The rate would be 1 third. And n minus 1, the exponent, would stay the same. We can put parentheses around the rate just to keep that separated. So our equation would be 36 times 1 third to the exponent n minus 1. Next sequence we'll look at is negative 2, 10, negative 50, dot, dot, dot. Again, the two numbers we need are a sub 1 and also the rate. a sub 1's just the first number, which would be negative 2. And the rate is the second number divided by the first number, which would be negative 5. 
And our equation again would be a n or a sub n equals the first term, a sub 1, times the rate, which would be negative 5, and the exponent is always n minus 1 for geometric sequences. The title of the last section of the notes is Geometric Mean. The definition of geometric mean is the missing terms of a sequence. First sequence we'll look at is 9, and then a blank spot, which we'll find a number for, followed by two more blank spots. And the last number would be 144. In this case, the first number of the sequence is 9. We want to find the three missing numbers, so the fifth number or last number would be 144. Using the formula for geometric, the last number, a sub n, would be 144, equals a sub 1, the first number, which is 9, times the rate. We all know what the rate is, because we all know what the second number is. And the exponent is n minus 1. We do know there's 5 numbers, so it would be 5 minus 1. To simplify this, we can divide by 9. 144 divided by 9 would be 16, and we'd have r to the 4th power. Find some number to the 4th power, which would be 16. That number would be 2, since 2 to the 4th power is 16, but it also could be negative 2, because negative 2 to the 4th power is also 16. So r would actually be plus or minus positive 2, which means r could be positive 2 or negative 2. The first answer for this question, if r is positive 2, 9 times 2 would be 18. 18 times 2 would be 36. 36 times 2 would be 72. And 72 times 2 would give us our final number. 144. If we multiply by a negative 2, the 18 could be positive or negative. Multiplying by a negative again would change us to positive 36, so that would stay the same. But multiplying by a negative 2, this could also be plus or minus 72. So our final answer, the three missing numbers, could be positive or negative 18, 36, and then positive or negative 72.